My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the other night, something amazing happened. And this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us happens when it's the first night of Ramadan. If it's the first night of Ramadan, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sufida to shayateen. That the shayateen, that they're shackled. وَفُتِحَتْ وَأُغْلِقَتْ أَبْوَابَ النَّارِ فَلَمْ تُفْتَحْ مِنْ هَبَابِ And the doors of the hellfire are closed and no door is open from them during the month of Ramadan. وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ فَلَمْ تُغْلَقْ مِنْ هَبَابِ And the doors of the Jannah are opened and none of them are closed during the month of Ramadan. وَيُنَادِي مُنَادٍ كُلَّ لَيْلَةٍ And every night, a caller calls out, يَا بَاغِيَ الْخَيْرِ أَقْبِلْ وَيَا بَاغِيَ الشَّرْ أَقْصِرْ O doer of good, come! And O doer of evil, stop! And then he said, عَلَيْهِ سَلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ وَلِلَّهِ عُتَقَى مِنَ النَّارِ وَلْذَلِكَ فِي كُلِّ لَيْلَةٍ And Allah has عُتَقَى those who are freed from the hellfire during this month, and that will be every night, every night during the month of Ramadan, Allah will have those who will be freed from the hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all from them, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Atakum shahr Ramadan, shahr mubarak, فرض الله عليكم صيامه فرض الله عليكم صيامه that the month of Ramadan has come a blessed month Allah has made it compulsory upon you to fast it فيه تفتح أبواب السماء the in this month the doors of the heaven are opened وفيه تغلق أبواب النار أبواب النار and the doors of the hellfire are closed وتغل Marada to shayateen. And the marada from the shayateen are locked up. The shackled down. And pay attention to the word the marada, which is the big shayateen. The OGs from them, huh? The ones who are the shot callers. They're the ones who are locked up during this month. Not all of the shayateen. And it's important to understand that because some people, they still tend to go astray. Subhanallah. So it's the major shayateen who are locked up during this month. And then he said, alayhi salatu wa salam, لِلَّهِ فِيهِ لَيْلَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٌ Allah has in this month one night which is better than 1,000 months. مَنْ حُرِمَ خَيْرُهَا فَقَدْ حُرِمْ That whoever has been denied its good, then he has truly been denied. My dear brothers and sisters, as we reflect on these hadiths, we can see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us in this blessed month. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give us in this blessed month. It's upon us now to reflect upon these meanings and to put them into action during the month of Ramadan. As we start Ramadan, it's always important that we remind ourselves of the hadith the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what did the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how was he during the month of Ramadan? So we can follow in his footsteps alayhi salatu wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would start his fast with, or before the fast with the suhoor, the pre-dawn meal. And this meal, which many of the Muslims around the world today have become negligent. They don't pay attention to it. They sleep through it. Or they eat very early in the night and they don't wake up for the suhoor. Leaving the blessings in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I want you to reflect with me on three hadiths. If you know the reality and the importance of this small meal before the adhan of fajr. And if you pay attention to these three hadiths, Insha'Allah, you'll never leave suhoor again, insha'Allah. 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith which is reported in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, تَسَحَّرُوا فَإِنَّ فِي السُّحُورِ بَرَكَةً Eat the suhoor, the pre-dawn meal, because the pre-dawn meal has barakah, it has blessings. And that's sufficient. The command of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for us to eat this meal, and that it has barakah, it has blessings, that's enough for any Muslim who hears this hadith to get up and to have this meal. Even if you're tired, even if you're sleeping, even if you want to sleep more, you get up and you have the pre-dawn meal because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded and it has blessings. And he said alayhi salatu was salam in the second hadith which was reported in Sahih Muslim. He said, فَصْلُوا مَا بَيْنَ الصِّيَامِنَا وَالصِّيَامِ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ أَكَلَةُ السَّحَرِ He said that the difference between our fast and the fast of the people of the book is the pre-dawn meal. Look, the difference between us and them is the pre-dawn meal. And he said alayhi salatu was salam about the suhoor and the hadith which was reported in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed. He said, As-suhooru kulluhu barakah. That the suhoor, all of it is barakah, all of its blessings. And he told us not to leave the suhoor, even if it's with jur'at ma, even if it's a sip of water, even just a sip of water, don't leave this pre-dawn meal. And then he said, alayhi salatu was salam, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى الْمُتَسَحَّرِينَ Allahu Akbar. He said that indeed Allah and His angels, they send blessings upon those who are eating the pre-dawn meal. Allahu Akbar. After hearing these three hadith, how could we not pay attention to this sunnah? And from this sunnah, and this is very important, is to know when we're supposed to have the suhoor. Because nowadays, we have these so-called cautious Muslims, the just-in-case Muslims, who invented into our religion a bid'ah, an innovation, which is not from it, which is called imsak. There's nothing in Islam called imsak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us very clearly, and we discussed the verse a few weeks ago in Surah Al-Baqarah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَكُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ The Allah said to eat and drink until the white thread of the dawn comes clear to you from the blackness of the night. That means eat until the time of Fajr. And it was narrated in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the hadith of Zayd ibn Thabit, Anas ibn Malik, he asked him, when Zayd told him, he said, we had the pre-dawn meal with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and when we finished, he said, we got up for the salat. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood up and went to the salat. It was time for the salat al-fajr, meaning that they ate all the way up until the time of fajr. Anas radiallahu anhu, he asked Zayd, he said, how many, how long was the time between the meal you had and between the Adhan. He said about 50 ayahs. How long will it take you to read 50 ayahs of the Quran? That's the time. I Meaning right before the Fajr, close to the Fajr, they would have the meal. And Imam Malik, he reported in his Muwatta that the son of Abu Bakr as Siddiq, Abdullah radiallahu anhum, that he said, My father used to tell me that we would finish our Qiyam our night prayer, and then we would be in a hurry to eat out of fear that the, the adhan would be called. Meaning that they used to pray in the last third of the night and that they used to pray for a long time and they would eat right before the fajr. This is the time. There's nothing called imsak where we say, for example, today the adhan for us is about 3.20. 3.20 and we say, actually, 3.05, we say we stop. We stop eating during that time just in case, just to be on the safe side, subhanAllah. If that was the way to do, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have formed us and he would have done it himself. But they ate all the way up to the time of the adhan. And the best meal that you can have, the best thing that you can eat for suhoor is the same thing that you do when you break your fast, is the tamr, the dates. 
The Prophet وسلم, he said, Ni'ma suhoor al mu'min at tamar. What a blessed meal is it for the believer, the tamar, the dates. The dates give you strength and energy throughout the day. Even if you just have a few of them with another meal, alhamdulillah, it's barakah, it's blessings, as Rasulullah told us. The Prophet وسلم, when it came to the iftar and how we break our fast, because many of us have drifted away from the sunnah and the teachings of Rasulullah wasallam. There's several things we need to be focusing on when we break our fast and how we break our fast. What we should be doing before we break the fast. And how we should break the fast, when we should break the fast, and the, thing we should eat, the things we should eat when we break the fast, and is there any dua that we say? All of these things we need to know. First of all, when it comes to what we should be doing before the fast, we should be making dua. Because we know in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that three, their dua will not be rejected. Three people, their dua will not be rejected. The first one he said, The one who is fasting until he breaks his fast. Before our fast, this is a time for us to focus on dua. Focus on making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all of the things that you want from the deen and from the dunya. And then, how do we break our fast? It's the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be prompt in breaking the fast. That we break the fast quickly. He said alayhi salatu wa salam in the hadith, لا يزال الناس بخير ما عجل الفطر He said that the people will remain upon good as long as they hasten to break the fast. They're quick in breaking the fast. Not delaying once again, say, akhwan, shwiya, tura tura. Let's... Uh, Let's just make sure, let's be on the safe side here. Let's add an extra two, three minutes. SubhanAllah. The time is there, it's official. This has been studied in detail, that these are the times of Maghrib, Bismillah, the Adhan's been called right away. Allahu Akbar, you put the date in your mouth. Don't delay. And then the dua you say, once you've broken your fast, when we say, ذَهَبَ الذَّمَ وَابْتَلَتِ الْعُرُوقِ وَثَبَتِ الْأَجْرِ inshallah. This is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he used to say when he would break his fast. That the thirst has gone away and the veins have been moistened and the ajr, the reward has been affirmed, inshallah. There's a famous hadith that many people say, which is, Allahumma laka sumt wa ala rizqika aftart. And this hadith is da'if, it's not authentic. It's Mursal al Hazm and confirmed that the Prophet وسلم, said this. Therefore, we should only focus on the first dua that we mentioned when we break our fast, which is inshallah. This is the Sunnah of Rasulullah. How would the Prophet وسلم, break his fast? He would break his fast firstly if he found it rutab, which is the fresh dates. If he couldn't find rutab, fresh dates, he would go and have regular dates. If he didn't find regular dates, he would just have water. And then what would he do, alayhi salatu wasalam? He would quickly go and pray. As it came in Sahih Muslim from the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha. When she was asked how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam broke his fast, she said he would hasten to break his fast and then to pray. This is the sunnah. Not to sit around and to fill up our stomachs. Huh? And then to waddle to the masjid in the third rak'ah. And, and get the, if we get to the masjid, Bismillah. Brothers are struggling. They ate so much. Bismillah, Akhwan. Alhamdulillah, the khair is there. It's going to be there when you come back from, from, from Salat. Follow the sunnah. The sunnah, it's not just barak of the sunnah. It's also health benefits for yourself. You have a couple of dates, three, five, seven. Always focus on witr. It's the sunnah of Rasulullah, he loves witr. Eat three dates, five dates, seven dates, some water, maybe a juice or something like that. Get up, go to the masjid, and come back. And your meal will be there. It's not going to disappear. And you can eat slowly and calmly. Don't overeat. So when you come to Tarawih, once again, you don't have to waddle to Tarawih. You can make it there, you can focus, and you can benefit from your ibadah. This is how Rasulullah wasallam used to break his fast. When you look at how the Prophet wasallam was during the day and during the night, during Ramadan, the Prophet 
was described to us, how he would change when Ramadan entered. In the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, which is reported in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, كَانَ أَجْوَدَ النَّاسِ وَأَجْوَدْ مَا يَكُونْ فِي رَمَضَانِ that the Prophet وسلم, he was the most generous of people and he would be the most generous in Ramadan. Obviously, the Iman is increasing with the fast, but there's something else. He describes it in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. He said, حِينَ يَلْقَاهُ جِبْرِيلُ وَكَانَ يَلْتَقِي بِهِ كُلَّ لَيْلَةً He said when Jibreel would meet him, and he would meet him every night, يُدَارِسُهُ Quran, Revising the Qur'an with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jibreel and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam revising the Qur'an in Ramadan every single night. And at the end of the hadith, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he said, فَلَا رَسُولُ اللَّهُ أَجْوَدْ بِالْخَيْرِ مِنَ الْرِيحِ الْمُرْسَلَةِ That the Prophet sallallahu is more generous than the blowing wind, than the fast wind. This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Ramadan. He was like this outside of Ramadan, but he would increase, taking his ibadah to an even higher level during this blessed month, increasing in his acts of worship. And this month, my dear brothers and sisters, and we're still at the beginning, which is contradictory to the action of Muslims today, who take it easy and chill out and are lazy during the month of Ramadan. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the early Ummah, the ones who were successful, they were active and energetic during this blessed month. In fact, some of the greatest battles that were fought in Islam were fought during the month of Ramadan. The Battle of Badr, the conqueror of Mecca, during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all of these were in Ramadan. Al-Qadisiyya was in Ramadan. The conquering of Al-Andalus, Spain, was during Ramadan. The war of Az-Zalaqa, which is in the south of modern day Spain, was during the month of Ramadan. Ain Jalud, Hittin, all of these amazing wars. Even the war, the modern one, the 1973 or the war of October as they call it when the Muslim Arab armies defeated the Zionists in 1973, it was during the month of Ramadan, subhanAllah. All of these show us that this is a month of action, not a month of sitting and chill out. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be lazy this month, I can't work, I can't move. Everybody, oh, I'm so tired of You're supposed to be more active. But what happens is that we're overeating. We're stuffing ourselves during the night so we can't move. It's like a binge, like anesthetic we put into our bodies during the night and we're frozen during the night and during the day. Bismillah. If you eat less and drink more water, you're going to find the energy during the day. You're going to have and enjoy the fast. You're not going to be tired. But unfortunately, we go against the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Ramadan. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to encourage us to pray the tarawih and to focus on the night prayer. In fact, he led the prayer with his companions as it was reported in Sahih al-Bukhari. The first night and then the second night the masjid became and he even fuller. And they said in the narration, the third or the fourth night, the masjid was packed. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't come out and he didn't lead the companions in prayer. He told them at Fajr time, he said, I was aware of your presence. But I was afraid that Allah would make the tarawih for you fart. Therefore, he said, I didn't come out. And Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an is the one who revived this sunnah during his time in his Khilafah when he gathered the people to pray behind Ubay ibn Ka'b. When you reflect on what we've been talking about, you can see that the actions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam focused on four main areas during the month of Ramadan. On the fast itself, and on the Qur'an, and on generosity and sadaqah, and focused on the night prayer. 
And these are the four things that we also need to be focusing on. When it comes to the fast, not just refraining from food and drink, but the importance of realizing that this is an act of ibadah, an act of worship, that we are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this action. And that we are nourishing our souls. We're reviving the spirituality that we need in our everyday life through this fast. We're protecting and close guarding our fast, protecting our tongues. We're enabling ourselves to overcome our desires. This is the fast. This is the essence of fasting that we need to be focusing on during this month. When it comes to the Quran, something amazing. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran talks about Shah Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, he doesn't mention the word fasting right away with it. What does he mention? Shah Ramadan Alladhi Unzila fihi al Quran. The month of Ramadan that the Quran was sent down. And then Allah tells us in the ayah some of the reasons for the Quran being sent down to us. Shah Ramadan Alladhi Unzila fihi al Quran. Hudan lin nas wa bayyinatin min al huda wal furqan as a guidance to mankind and as clear guidance and a criterion to know what is correct and what is falsehood al-furqan this is the quran and this is why the quran was sent down to us and this is why this is the month of the quran along with the fact that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to study the quran and revise the quran every single night with jibril is why the early muslims and all the generations until today focus on the Qur'an during the month of Ramadan. The question always comes, how much should we try to read during this blessed month of the Qur'an? And sometimes we hear the narrations, when you hear that al qama or some of this early tabi'een, that they would read the Qur'an in every seven days, outside of Ramadan, not in Ramadan. Outside of Ramadan, every seven days. Some of them every six days. And then in Ramadan, they would, he would read the Qur'an every two days. And then the last ten days, he would read it every day. And then you hear another one, Al-Aswad ibn Yazid. He would read the Qur'an every six days, outside of Ramadan. When Ramadan came, he would read it every two days. And he would only sleep between Moghab and Isha. Allahu Akbar. We hear these stories. Some of us try to follow in their footsteps. And we don't make it to the second or third day of Ramadan. And we're burnt out. Other ones, they say, Akhi, how can we do something like that? It's impossible. Is it possible for us to accomplish this? The answer is yes and no. First of all, yes. It is possible, but it has been done. Some of our scholars, subhanAllah, I even heard a story of a sister in the West who is a mother who takes care of her children and her house and prepares the meals in Ramadan, all these things. But yet she reads the Quran every two days in Ramadan. But when we say, no, it's not possible for most of us, why? Because they used to read the Qur'an so much outside of Ramadan, when it came time for Ramadan, they were just increasing a bit. Also, we're so occupied with the things of the dunya, our telephones and all this, as we talked about in one of the past khutbahs, that we don't have time to actually read the Qur'an, unfortunately. This is the reality. But if we really want to benefit from the Qur'an during this month, we need, as we said, to have goals. Know how much we want to read, set your goals, and focus on reading the Qur'an as much as you can during this blessed month. If you want to read one juzu, two juzu, sit down and determine your goals and strive for it day in and day night, day in, throughout the day and throughout the night. If you read a little bit before tarawih, a little bit after, a little bit during the night, when you wake up after, before fajr, when you after fajr, sometimes during the day when you have a break at work, you're going to find you can read two, three juzus easy. And I want us during this month to revive a forgotten sunnah when it comes to the Qur'an. And this sunnah is listening to the Qur'an with tadabbur. Listening to the Qur'an with tadabbur. Not just when we go to work, we have it in, on, or the, during the houses, or working in the house, our sisters, they have the Qur'an on. This is good. Continue. But I'm talking about something special where we download our favorite qari, and we sit back away from everyone else and everything else, and we just listen 
to the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we try to reflect on some of the meanings. So this is a forgotten sunnah. It's confirmed in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Abdullah ibn Abbas, uh, to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an. And he told Ibn Mas'ud, he said, Iqra alayya. Read to me the Qur'an. And Ibn Mas'ud, he said, Iqra alayk wa alayka qad unzil. He said, read to you. And the Qur'an was sent down to you. He said, Uhibbun asma'u min ghayri. He said, I love to hear it from other than myself. And that's why we said, focus on who is your favorite Qari. Download the entire Qur'an on your phone. Get your headphones. And listen to the Qur'an. And we said with tadabbur. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, as I was reading to him from Surah An-Nisa, when he reached verse 41, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَأُولَاءِ شَهِيدًا He said, what if, Allah said to the, he said, what if we come the Yawm Al-Qiyamah, or how will it be when we come the Yawm Al-Qiyamah with a witness upon every Ummah, upon every nation? There will be a witness upon them. And then he said, and we will come with you, O Muhammad, as a witness upon all of them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's reflecting on the meanings, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. He said to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Hasbu, that's sufficient, stop there. He said, I looked over and I can see the tears coming down the, the eye, out of the eyes of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because he re listened to the Quran, reflecting on its meanings, and this is one of the beneficial things that we have now, alhamdulillah, with our modern technology. We can download and listen and benefit from the Quran during this blessed month. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن والسنة ونفعنا وياكم بما فيه ما من الآيات والحكمة أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, from the things that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was focusing on, as we mentioned, was being more generous. He was the most generous. Although of all of mankind, but he would increase his generosity during this blessed month. And this is one of the things that we should be focusing on, is giving as much charity and sadaqah as we can during this blessed month. And focusing on those who are truly in need, especially those who are supporting the ummah. Many times people, we want to give them to the poor people, that's good. But also don't forget the ones who are striving for the ummah, especially those in the field of da'wah, who are striving as the Ummah is in a situation where the misconceptions are being spread about Islam and you have those who select, those select few of the du'at who are striving to so support the da'wah as one of your projects during this month as we support the poor people as well. Imam Az-Zuhri, rahimullah, the great tabi'i, when Ramadan would come, they said, he would just busy himself with reading the Qur'an and feeding the poor people. Focus. We don't have to do too much. But make sure we have quality of what we're doing. The Qur'an, charity, and the night prayer. Don't lose the ajr, ya khwan. Alhamdulillah, here in the masajid, most of the masajid, the salat is not that long. Most of the time, it's even less than half of a juz. Alhamdulillah, whoever prays that every night, he has the promise from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that his past sins will be forgiven. Man qama ramadan, iman wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddam an dambi. That over praise during the month of Ramadan through his iman and through his ihtisab that he wants the reward from Allah that his past sins will be forgiven. But there's a big mistake that many of the brothers and sisters fall into year in and year out. And pay attention to this. And that is they come in, they pray two rakats, four rakats, six rakats. Sometimes they pray up to the shaykh and with it and they leave. What is the reward that they're losing when they do this? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ قَامَ مَا الْإِمَامِ حَتَّى يَنْصَرِفْ كُتِبِ لَهُ قِيَامُ اللَّيْلَ That whoever prays with the Imam until he finishes, meaning until he says, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, until the last rak'ah, whether it be 11, whether it be 23, whatever masjid you pray in, that whoever prays with the Imam until he finishes, he gets the reward as if he's prayed for the entire night. An extra ajr that you will receive, the reward like you're praying, you're home sleeping, and you're getting the reward of praying for the entire night because you pray with the imam until he finished. So don't let shaitan fool you. Some people say, no, no, but I want to pray with her at home. I want to pray with her later. And I can't pray if I pray with her. Is this correct or not? This is not correct. It's permissible for us to pray with her. 
to, excuse me, it's permissible for us to pray nafil, to do the nafil prayer after witr. But we can't make witr twice. What's per- forbidden is for us to pray two witrs in one night. It's forbidden to pray two witr. So if I pray witr with my imam, I can go home and pray six rakats. I can pray 10. I can pray 20. As many rakats as I want of nafil. But I don't make another witr at the end of these rakats. That's what that's what's, you're not allowed to do. But nafil you can pray all through the night, even if you pray witr. So don't lose this great reward. My dear brothers and sisters, as we end today's khutbah, and I apologize, I went a bit long. We need to make sure that we protect our fast. It's not just refraining from the food and the drink. We have to make sure that we protect our fast. Just like we protect it from the food and drink that comes into our stomach, we need to protect our tongues from all evil speech. We need to protect our eyes and our ears. Make sure that we're not looking at that which is haram during the days or during the nights of Ramadan. This is how it should be all throughout the year, but especially during Ramadan. That we refrain from listening to that which is harmful for us. It's Ramadan and you're going down the road listening to music. Astaghfirullah. You're coming from Tarawih and you're listening to music. It's Ramadan. Make sure that we focus on protecting our fast and protecting our Ramadan. That we optimize and get as much reward as we can during this month and we don't ruin it and don't let these small shell themes take away from us during this blessed month. أن الله قد أمركم بأمر بدأ بنفسه ثم ثنى بملائكة الكرام فقال عز وجل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على